Hello and welcome. Today we're doing some more only up mechanics. So in the last video, this is what we have for the distance of that. So luckily here in our onbegin, we just call this player dot in an UI, which is just going to run all of this code. And that's going to start the distance tracker for them. So all we need to do is just run this same init UI for every single player that joins the game halfway in. So first, let me make a new function. I'm going to call this handle player join. It's going to take an agent of type agent void equals here. All we have to do is just get their player and just call init UI again here. So just do if player equals player. And I'm going to cast this agent into a player type. And if we get inside and that's the player, then all we have to do is just call player dot init UI. That's basically it. But this is just a function. This isn't actually being called anywhere. So we need to first actually make that being called. So what we need now is just to pass in this function anytime a player joins the game. So the way we do that is by doing get by space dot player added event. And you want to pass in these two parentheses here because it's a function then dot subscribe and we just pass in our handle player join function like that so now what we're gonna do is we're going to listen to anytime a player gets added to our game and then we're going to run the handle player join which is just going to initialize our ui and then just go back here and just build first code and just like that we have that set up okay so now another thing is a offset so for example i was assuming you guys all started at ground level but if you want for example for example let's say this is your starting plot. okay so i'm up here on the platform and you can probably see this is three meters which if i want this to be zero meters we can easily do that in the editor so once you have your the height of your platform or whatever just simply take note of that and in here in our rounded distance we're going to after the floor we're going to actually subtract minus just three now obviously this would be whatever the height of your thing would be but mine is just three so now i'm just going to minus three here then just go back here and just build this code here all right we can see now mine is at negative three because we're below here but if we climb up here you can see now we're at zero meters so that's an easy enough so firstly uh we're not going to be using any code for this so if you don't like coding then that's great because we don't need any of that code Okay, so first, just get a timer device. Just grab one like this. And then you can either use a trigger if your platform is small enough, so you can resize it. But this just can only go as big. So instead, we're going to be using a mutator zone. So I'm going to drag a mutator zone here, and I'm just going to roughly size this to... All right, so that's my mutator zone. Obviously, you can resize it however you want. So this is going to trigger our timer. So firstly, let's go into our timer here. And in our settings, firstly, we're going to change this to count up. And the duration is just going to just make this max like nine and or something, which is an hour. That's the max time you can get. And then here we're going to do, you can put the name or whatever, activating team, whatever. But this, you need to change this applies to only to the player. This will mean that everyone has their own individual timer instead of everybody sharing a global timer. Now in the completion behavior, you also want to change this to reset that's just going to reset the timer back to zero and then here you can just put the text like timer running text like get to the top or whatever so get to the top or whatever yeah you can also make it show on hud which i want and that's pretty much it for the start we're going to get this and we're going to pick the mutator zone and then we're going to do on player entering zone so that's going to start the timer so if i push changes okay so back in game we can see we have no timer set uh, but if we go up here Oops, if I can climb here, you can see get to the top. We have now started our timer up there and this won't stop even if I fall down. So now what we want is to make this timer reset when we fall to the ground or to the lower level or wherever you want. OK, so the next step is having the timer stop. Uh, but actually, first, I want this to not be visible in the game, this actual physical timer. So what we can do here is just go invisible during game, just make this Hidden. now we need something that stops the timer when we fall to our death or whatever what you can do is just use another mutator zone so i'm going to grab this mutator zone hold alt and drag this down and that's going to make a copy of our new mutator zone and then we can resize this to make this i don't know maybe 10 by 10 we i'm just going to rename this mutator reset timer so now in our timer clock here we want to go down here here and then we're going to reset the timer and that's going to be we want to click our mutator reset timer and again on player 
entering zone. So that's going to reset the timer if we fall all the way down here. Okay, so we're back and you can see I don't have the timer. But if I now go up here, we're going to get the timer. So get to the top. So let's say, I don't know, I'm parkouring, whatever, I'm jumping. And then, whoops, I fell. You can see here now the timer has reset. Now it has just completely disappeared. And if we go back here, it should start from zero again. And you can see here, get to the top, zero, one, three, four, five. Again. So obviously you can resize your mutator zones. Okay, so that's that. So lastly, what I want is for the timer to also reset if you get eliminated. So for that, we can just use an elimination manager here. So just drag one of these out like this. So in the elimination manager, one thing you do have to change is if you go down here, you can see ballot on self elimination. And that's going to make it so that if you die of fall damage, then it's going to trigger and properly remove. And everything else is just fine. So now we go into your timer and we are going to reset. So add another element and we're going to click our elimination manager and on eliminated so whenever our player gets eliminated it's going to reset the timer so i've moved the mutator zone out of the way just to see that this indeed works and it's not the mutator zone resetting our timer and if i go up here you can see the timer appears so if i go up here and i'm just going to run and if i fall my timer should just get removed there we go so the timer gets removed and we now have no more timer so now we can go up here and our timer is going to restart from zero back again and if we press respawn that should also remove our timer just like anyway that's it for this video but as always i hope this was helpful and yeah